very likely familiar with Timor's Big Flat Grinders release. And if not, they just released four new grinders on Kickstarter. And I have a link down in the description if you want to check it out. But today we're going to be talking about one of those four grinders that all share the same moniker. Why four and not one or heck seven grinders? Well, they picked four because they have two series of these grinders and each set is gonna have a different burr size. And you probably already know this, but there will be a 78 millimeter burr size and there will be a 64 millimeter burr size. Each set is gonna have a separate burr set within those sets. So you have the drip coffee burrs, which are made out of these patented hybrid looking burrs. They look like regular burrs meet ghost burrs. They're kind of cool. And on the other one, you have espresso burrs. So burrs that can get close enough to touch. That way you can make espresso or you could make filter if you wanted to make filter. The 64 is kind of like the little sibling to the 78. The 78 is definitely the big brother of the two. It comes with a much more premium feel, a little bit more of a stocky body, but it is also more expensive. And so today, out of those four grinders, we are gonna take a look at one particular one, the 64S. Now I've had the 64S on my bar for about two months now, and I have used it almost exclusively. For my meticulous video, I was using the 64S. Full disclosure on why I have it in the first place is I was sent it to review it and I did not get paid for this review. Uh, this is my opinion completely. So if you're watching this, great. I got some spec on my shirt. Speaking of specs, this grinder houses a brushless DC motor, basically meaning it's not creating friction whenever it's running. This is gonna make your grinder have a lot less sound, run a little bit more efficiently and live a lot longer. Maybe you and me, baby. A long time. I love you. I can't wait to grow old with you. Obviously in the name, you would know that it houses a 64 millimeter burr set inside. Along with many other grinders on the market that are going to go to variable RPM, this is among one of those. It has a variable RPM between 800 and 1200. And we'll talk about what that does to your coffee in just a minute. 64S is a stepless grinder, meaning there is no steps when you adjust it. And the 64 as well as the 78 are stepped grinders. And other than that, and the burrs and the little espresso indicator lines, on the actual dial, I don't believe there's any difference in the grinders. This grinder is filled with magnets. It has a magnet on the front plate. It has a magnet for the catch cup. It has a magnet for the lid. It is full of magnets. Now that's just a really brief overview. If you wanted to know more about the specs, you can always go to their spec list. The link again is down in the bio. Now I'd like to play a game with you that I like to call what works and what's a quirk, where we go back and we talk about some of the quirks of the grinder and what works with the grinder. But before we do that, you dirty pieces of love, I need you to go down there and hit the subscribe button. It really does help the channel. And so many of you just come and watch and then don't subscribe and you can't do me like that. So let's talk about this grinder a little bit more, starting with the catch cup. I love that this grinder has a magnetic catch cup and that it is extremely attracted to that catch cup. It sits perfectly underneath where the grinds come out, making it where there is no mess whenever you're using the grinder. Sometimes I even use the little magnet where the catch cup goes to hold the screws while I'm taking apart the grinder to clean the burrs. So what's the quirk? This catch cup does feel a lot lighter than you'd expect. It feels kind of like a cheap aluminum metal. The dosing cup is also not anti-static, so you get fines left in the cup occasionally and you have to wipe it out. Next up is the lid. I actually love how the lid is designed to slide back and then magnetically lock into place place. This is something that I've grown to love on this grinder and I kind of miss it on other grinders that have similar lid structures. But as far as the quirk, this lid on my grinder is way too light and when I try to push it back, sometimes it flies across the room and gets flung behind my bar, which is not ideal. But full disclosure, they did tell me before when I got this grinder that my lid was a different version. It was a pre-production version and it was a bit thinner. While we're on the subject of the lid, because the auger is so close to the actual grinding chute, there's a little bit of spray back sometimes when you grind. So sometimes when you open the lid, you might still see some grinds and some chaff and some fines on the inside of the hopper. Another thing that works and is a quirk is the variability on this grinder. I love that this grinder comes with a variable RPM, but one of the quirks of that is that they put the dial for the variable RPM on the back. And if you put it on the back, and it has the numbers on the back, well, how are you supposed to know what number you're on without just guessing by reaching back and then turning the dial? Maybe not on the back of the grinder should that dial be there, but I'm very thankful that that dial is there. Next, we have the noise level of this grinder, and this grinder being a brushless motor, when it's turned on, it has a beautiful, beautiful hum to it. Then, of course, when you add coffee to it, it sounds like you're grinding coffee because you're grinding coffee. It is, however, quieter than all the other grinders on my bar other than the Ode Gen 2, which is extremely quiet as well. Next, the actuation button, also known as a button, this little baby, this button feels fantastic. And my mama always told me that a grinder is just as good as its butt and she loved coffee. And there's no quirk here. I just really liked the button and wanted to talk about it. 
Next up, we have the rotary knocker, which is probably my favorite feature on this grinder. Timework created a patented knocker that when you rotate it, it clicks down and then pops back up into the bird chamber, which releases all of the fines and chaff and little bits of static that attached itself to the grinder, but also keeps it from being in your cup. Found it to be an incredible workflow, being able to grind coffee, and if I want to use the little knocker and it's all out, there's almost zero retention after you use the knocker. That ability to be able to use the rotary knocker to get all the coffee out because the burrs are sitting right there is great for when you wanna switch between espresso and filter because you don't really have to clean the grinder that extensively to get it to be pretty much good as new. And that rotary knocker is incredibly efficient. Whenever you're using it, you'll see down to 0.1, sometimes just zero retention because the burrs are sitting right above that chute and that knocker is pretty good at thwacking all those grinds out. I love the front dial. It is so hefty, has a really nice granular movement to it, makes dialing in very easy and very enjoyable on this grinder. Takes a lot of inspiration from what look like camera lenses and I love that it is stepless. I also love that it has the little espresso indicators making it easier to dial in for your espresso. There is a caveat though. Those indicators are not quite where that line meets and it's kind of hard to see what number it's actually pointing at. It's a little unfortunate, but it's not a big deal of course. You just have to kind of look over the edge and kind of guesstimate what number you're on. And finally, I just want to say that I love the shape. I think it looks great. It's very thin, kind of like a fish. And I think it's a really beautiful grinder. Though if you did put it in a flea market, a grandmother would try to buy it and ask how much for the sewing machine. But other than the beauty and the function of this grinder, we should talk a little bit about the variable RPM, a new feature that we're starting to see on grinders. I'm just gonna pause the video for a second. This is future Emily interrupting past Emily. You can tell because I am wearing a different outfit. So a couple of updates I did get the 64 burrs, the uh, burrs that you make drip coffee with, and they are significantly more pleasant when it comes to making drip coffee on this grinder. I'd highly recommend that if you get this grinder, you also get a set of the 64 burrs. Another update is as I was trying to change out burrs in here, and I've swapped them out for the turbos and the SSP in this grinder, I noticed that my grinder started to act a little funny. It started to make kind of a can't really do it grinding noise. Like it was a little harder for it to grind coffee. It was my fault because I ended up rubbing off a lot of grease when it comes to the shaft inside the grinder when I was changing out the burrs. So what I did is I popped open the fellow opus because I knew there was a bunch of lubricant in the fellow opus. I swabbed some of that lubricant. I put it back on my grinder and it works good as new. So just letting you know that if you do a lot of burr changing, you might get a little coffee in the bearings or you might actually rub off a little bit of that grease inside. So you can always lube up the grinder to get it going fresh as new. And lastly, we're talking about variability here, and I wanted to make sure that I was actually speaking correctly. So when I was in Portland, I ran into none other than Jonathan Gagne, who is a good friend, and we were hanging out, and I asked him if he didn't mind being in the video to explain what happens when you change a grinder's variability and what happens to the coffee in that grinder. So the one thing to remember about RPM is that it's a complete chaotic variable, which means that if you're Using a new grinder, you have to relearn what RPM does to your particle size distribution. So sometimes when you uh, grind, when your grinder uh, rotates faster, sometimes this is going to make your grounds finer, and sometimes it's going to make it coarser, and you can adjust the burst spacing to compensate and go back to the same kind of shot. Um, it can go either way, but it can also do something else. Uh, which is kind of weird, you can change the profile of your burrs and it doesn't always change the profile. So there are some burrs that produce more fines and you get more texture if you brew espresso, espresso with them and you get also more body in filter coffee. There are other burrs that produce way less fines and they're gonna have a cleaner taste, uh, lower mouthfeel. So this is mm -hmm. two different styles of burrs. And sometimes uh, some burrs, when you change the RPM, they change in style a little bit. They can become a little bit more mouthfeel heavy or cleaner, depending on the burrs, but it can go either way. And so both of these things can happen at once. So maybe your grinder is going to become a little bit on the cleaner side of things and grind a bit coarser, which you can adjust back with burr spacing. Or maybe it's going to make it like uh, cleaner and finer. So it's, you cannot assume what is gonna happen. One experience I had with uh, the burrs I had in my EG1, which are the ULF, filter low fines ones, it doesn't change the style of the burrs at all if I change the RPM. But it, if I uh, grind with a higher RPM, it grinds finer. 
So I need to adjust a couple ticks coarser to get the same espresso or the same filter. But then it's the same. But then it's exactly the same, the same style, exactly, the same extraction cool. yield and everything. But with the key grinder, which I also use for espresso, if I change the RPM, I completely change the style of my espresso, even after having dialed in back to the same like shot time. So it's pure chaos. It's pure chaos, <laughs> yeah. I hope this video and deep dive has been helpful for you. I hope you learned something and maybe made a better decision whether or not you want to back the sculptor. And if not, and you didn't like this video, well, here's another video you might like, and you can watch it and waste away your days with me.